Well, hello and welcome to my studio. Uh, today I am going to be showing you how to make an embroidered pet bag like this one. And this is one of my favourite things to make, partly because it shows off your embroidery and partly because it's just like a really nice, useful, practical, beautiful thing. It doesn't have to be a peg bag. Lots of people use them for storage. I've seen them in camper vans hung up, um, storing all kinds of toiletries and things. So I think a great idea. My name is Jane Lindsay and I run Snapdragon Life. I'm a textile artist based in the middle of Scotland and um, I'm very glad to have you here. So this peg bag is made from two pieces of linen and a child's coat hanger. Now you need to make your own pattern because the pattern depends on the size and shape of the coat hanger that you have. If you want to have all of the step-by-step -step instructions for this, I have got a download and I'll link that in the description here. If you want, I'm going to be freehand embroidering this peg bag. If you want to learn how to freehand embroider, I have a course which takes you from threading up your sewing machine to being able to do things like this. Um, and that's for sale on my website and I'll link it. But I would say that as it is one of the core courses, if you want to save money, then you would be better joining the studio club, which is a wonderful thing to do anyway, um, and taking the course. Uh, there's no minimum term, um, and that is $9.95 a month, and there's also supported places. Anyway, on to the making. <music> So I have cut out my linen and then I have pressed it so that the sort of bottom part of the pocket is facing upwards and is nice and flat. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to embroider it. So I swap over my normal foot for what is called a darning foot and you can maybe see it there. It's got an open um, bit at the bottom and it hovers above this plate on the machine. So I'm going to clip that in there. Then make sure that my machine is set to darning. Pull up the bottom thread. I'm going to sew a meadow, put down the darning foot, and you can see the fabric still moves around down this. And now I'm going to put my foot right to the floor on my sewing machine because I want the needle to go up and down as fast as possible. And then, then I am going to embroider a meadow. I think I'll swap the noise for some music.
And here I've reached the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way backwards. And that's what gives some liveliness to the meadow. <music> embroidered this piece here and you can see how it's going to become the peg bag this is like the kind of pocket bit and then this is the top so what I'm going to do is I'm going to iron that so it's completely flat but first of all I'm going to turn over this top bit twice this will be hand hemmed as the last thing um, that's done but obviously I need to make sure that it is included within the side seams in its folded thing. So fold that over twice and pin it before I iron it because I think so I can then get it ironed nice and flat. If you're wanting to learn how to make a pincushion, this kind of design, I've got a blog um, and a video about that too. So um, I'll link that in the description. The next step is to sew this seam here, which is the hem. Um, I'm just going to sew it on the machine because it's quite well hidden within the peg bag. The next step is to sew the seams. So, right sized together, like that. Right, and I've pinned it to hold it together and I'm going to sew one line down here and one line down here. I'll take the pins out. And trim all of this bit off, um, not too close to the stitching, but just to make it a little bit neater. Right at the base where there's going to be the tight corners, take a little bit just off the side like that. You're not cutting right up to the stitching. It's just to make it easier to um, get a nice corner and then on these shoulder bits here, take two or three little, tiny little wedges out. And again, that just reduces the bulk of fabric, but don't go near the stitching. You're not actually going to cut a hole in it. And then finally, I am going to top of the pocket, if I get my needle sorted out here. Um, I do that just because 
I think it looks neater. I don't like having a machine sewn hem at the top of the embroidery. So, go just knot my thread. Take it in from the side seam. And it's going to work my way along here and make it as invisible as possible with this. peg back. So let me just turn it round like that. That's the pocket at the bottom. Really get the corners pushed out as much as you can. Give it a nice shape. And of course if you don't want to embroider um, this peg bag it will also make up beautifully in all kinds of materials. I would imagine it would be just stunning in like a vintage printed linen or you might want to go for you know something really fun, um, I mean, a quilting cotton, something like that. Right so now I've got the shape and it is worth taking your time in just getting the curves to look really nice. them out and then take the uh, coat hanger and poke it through that hole at the top. Now sometimes it's not easy to find the hole. Okay. You don't want the um, seam allowance to come out so there we go. Pop it in. Tuck the curves over it, and make it back into the bag, and there we are, um, a bag for your pegs. <laughs>